quarterfinals, our history of the 2018 World Cup. And yeah, I have jerseys of two teams in the semifinals, but it was a close one. Um, yeah, my new Croatia jersey will not go in the closet that soon. I'm happy about that. I can wear it until the end. Uh, yeah, the better team won. Let's put it, let's say that first. But they made a lot of hard work out of it. Um, they, yeah, I'm trying to remember the game now. It was so emotional, but I actually thought that uh, Russia was a lot more open uh, in the game than against Spain. I think they thought they can achieve more against Croatia than against Spain. Um, whether Spain is not a better team than Croatia, I leave up for judgment. I actually... The more I watched Spain, the less I thought of them. And I think what they played against Russia was just uh, horrifying. Um, although probably if I look at potential, yeah, they might be better than Croatia overall. But I think at this World Cup in particular, Croatia was the better team, period. And they showed that they are the better team. Um, took control of the game, created chances, played forward. The game was actually quite open and that was uh, good to see at first. And just when you thought that Croatia is taking hold of the game, Cherishev pulls one in almost out of nowhere. Wonderful goal. Um, shot it, kind of a last ditch effort, and it sailed right into the um, corner, left hand corner from his point of view. Yeah, and Russia had a lead, and I thought that cannot be it. Don't get me wrong, it's not that I have anything against Russia, but they are, this is a limited side. Uh, I'm okay with them going as far as they went. They, they fully deservedly uh, are in the quarterfinal. But that was about it, honestly. Um, and I was hoping that Croatia will pull a Uruguay against them. No, they didn't. Russia put up a fight and they actually showed a little bit more. Then the equalizer for Croatia came shortly thereafter, probably uh, for the quality of the game a little bit too soon. Um, it was just eight minutes later, uh, it was Kramaric, who was all by himself in the box and just needed to head it in. Uh, crazy, honestly. Uh, yeah, so it was 1-1. Croatia was pressing for the second goal. Didn't get it. Halftime 1-1. And that was the problem. Uh, then the game was kind of very, very slow. Um, with Croatia clearly being the better team. But Russia also showing that what war they're made of. And yeah, uh, Croatia Perisic had a huge chance where they went, hit the post. And then it came out parallel. And that could have been the game. So after that big chance of Perisic, yeah, the game fell asleep. Um, and I think the only movement that came into the game was when um, the Croatian goalkeeper seemingly pulled his hamstring, or at least had some um, injury down there. And Russia actually thought, oh, we have, we have a chance. And Croatia was not sure. We have already substituted three times. We better now do something. And that was the time when I thought I suddenly saw an attack, but also Russia Tesla goalkeeper. It was Smolov who came on. Um, and yeah, he will feature in this video. Smolov is seemingly a big star in the Russian league. I remember him from the Confederations Cup last year. But um, yeah, uh, since we don't know much more of him, he cannot be that big of a star. Uh, to be honest, at least he's behaving like a star. I always had the feeling he, uh, there was a certain ar arrogance to his play. He clearly had ability, but there was a certain arrogance to it. And I, for instance, like Cherishev a lot more because he plays for the team and he also is quite skillful. And of the two of them, I think he's the Russian player that I liked at this tournament the most. Um, yeah, over time. And just at the time when you thought maybe Croatia needs to substitute the goalkeeper, they kind of prepared him well and a game started and suddenly Croatian players are limping like crazy. It was um, Mandzukic and then I think Vrzaka was his name. Um, 
had needed to be substituted and for a while Croatia even played with 10 men because they were not sure shall we now wait for the goalkeeper or um, to be substituted and keep an injured player on but then the LSL Manjukic is injured and yeah uh, Shubasic better not because he's the one that we need for the penalty shootout which was almost avoided Vida scored a header to make it 2-1 and yeah, the way this went in, it was not a pretty header. It went through two people uh, and just hit the corner. Yeah, it's hard to get for the goalkeeper. Uh, crazy defending on their part, but it came from a corner kick. So yeah, it was uh, the first goal from a dead ball situation. And, and when you could see in the stands i think everyone thought russia is done and at, for a short while it seemed like they're done but Cherchesov, the coach who I actually know quite well since he played in austria for a while he didn't let up he fired everyone up uh tried to get things going and in the second half of overtime it really seemed as russia got the second win and they really tried to go forward uh it was not effective at first but you really saw there is something in them. And then they get this free kick after a very stupid handball um, that he's even contesting that I thought was ridiculous. Juba who also got in, uh, puts it in the, in the box and Fernandez heads it in and absolute craziness ensues. It was really, um, yeah, the Russian people got hope again and the Croatian people were absolutely destroyed. Speaking of Croatian people, uh, I really like how the Croatian president, the female, uh, was really fully into it and with uh, jersey, get up, even color match, it actually didn't look like she has a jersey on uh, for a while. But yeah, I, I liked it uh, when even the high politicians get into it. And once Russia scored the 2-2, even though Modric tried the best to his ability to really pull the game back for Croatia, he knew, that, yes, uh, there are two, at least two injured players on, on squad. We, we don't want to have penalties. He tried to pull the game towards him, uh, give him credit for that. But no, Russia was closer to the third goal. It went to penalties and I was, oh yeah. Um, given all the emotions, it was all for Russia and then Russia went first as well. And if you have ever read anything about penalties and studies, it's better to go first. Except at this World Cup and for a few other penalty shootouts of late. Uh, we might discuss that later, I won't do it, I won't do it today. The key was that Smolov makes the first penalty and he makes an absolute mess out of it um don't get me wrong i was squarely on croatia's side i wanted the better team to go on uh, but making a penalty like that was pure arrogance first penalty shooter all you have to do is put it in don't be cute and if you want to chip it or lob it in do it in the center of the goal lob it a little bit higher don't make the flat lob in one corner uh, especially there's a chance the goalkeeper is there. This is the easiest save in the book. I actually, at first, I didn't even get it. I thought he hit the post on the other side. Uh, it was so weird to me. What was that? And that meant momentum swing to Croatia. Croatia makes it one nothing. Uh, of course, quick equalizer. And then, yeah, the next Croatian play, I think it was, yeah, Kovacevic. Uh, he was born in my hometown. So, yeah, I was very happy with that. I thought, yeah, again, the guys from Linz. Kovacevic is saved. Uh, Pendulum swing back to Russia. Russia could take the lead for the first time, and then Fernandez, and I really felt with him. Misses. And yeah, this was. I really hated to see that, honestly. Uh, because this was the one guy, he was on the highest of highs and now he was on the lowest of lows. Uh, and again, as much as I was on Croatia's side, um, I really felt sorry for this guy. Any other, because, you know, he is a Brazilian, he doesn't even speak Russian. He made the equalizing goal and then he misses and kind of, you know, the first players you blame are the ones that are not of the true nation. 
That's why I hated it. And then the key point in the penalty shootout. Uh, he missed if Modric would have missed. And every time Modric goes to the penalty spot, I'm shaking. I really am. I don't know why. Uh, he always makes it low. There's never a hard kick, at least from the ones I, I remember. And that's what he can. He put it to the left side. It is touched back in fifth. It goes against the post and then lobs itself just behind the uh, upright on the other side. Crazy. If you haven't seen it, go on YouTube, uh, look at the, uh, look, uh, somewhere. You'll surely find this penalty. This was this was the momentum swing. From then on, Croatia was flawless. Russia too, but from then on, Croatia was flawless. Because they knew luck is finally on their side. They had the one miss from Perisic in the second half where it went on the inside of the post and came out almost parallel to the goal line. Now they had their big break. And yeah, Rakitic. Uh, I was actually thinking that, uh, I think it was Kaczynski that made the last penalty. Not no, not 100% not, not, not on that, a Juba. No, 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 it wasn't either one of those. It was a young Russian guy. Never mind, I, I don't, I won't remember his name now. I thought that he will miss, no, he made it, but from what I've seen, there's nothing better if you know that with your penalty you can win the game. Uh, if you have to make it to not lose it, you will not make the penalty. On the other side, the other one is mostly made. And Rakitic, there wasn't even a question. He made it. Croatia went through. Jersey matchup. Still don't like the Croatian away kit. Go with something like this, but we will see it again against England. I don't see it any other way. I like that Russia played in red, and yeah, it was a decent matchup. The Croatian jerseys don't look as bad from afar. I just don't like them up close, especially on on the front. Uh, they could have done with something with the checkers or use this blue, use this blue. I'm sorry, I'm really still dejected about those jerseys, and we will see quite a lot of them. I think the only way that we will see them if uh, Croatia manages, if we see the regular jersey again, is if Croatia manages to play France somehow. But the way it will go is now Croatia will play uh, now England and then Belgium. So yeah, we will see the worst jersey, what I call the worst jersey of this World Cup, and I still am there. We'll see it six times. I'm sure of that. We might only see it five times. Fingers crossed. Who will be happiest about this result? Uh, well, obviously Croatians, and you've got to give it to the small nation. A little bit more than 4 million people having already two semifinals in their history. And world-class squads in both cases. Absolutely amazing for that nation. And England will be very happy because now they have a very, very tired and heavily injured Croatian team ahead of them. If they play, it's marked. Play it slow. I think um, they can make an easy win and go to the World Cup final. And what do we else learn? I don't have a jersey to retire. I have two nations still hanging here, mostly France. One is hanging here and I need an England jersey. I'll talk to you soon. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. If you've already done so, I would like to thank you for your support. It is very much appreciated. Also, check out the accompanying blog at the link provided in the description below and at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and until next time.